Hello and welcome to another restoration, Bycast Budget Restoration. Now I've been to my uh, favourite shop today in Newton Abbott and I've picked up a few items that you might want to see restored in the future. Now I'll start off with probably with something that might be familiar to some of the older generation back in the day. TVs and uh, radios or more often than not too expensive to buy so this particular company you could go to a, a shop or an outlet of some description and buy sorry a rent a TV or radio and then the old van used to turn up with your uh, produce so this is a uh, radio rentals TV service van so if, if, the, if the device went wrong then they would come out and fix it as part of your rental agreement made in England by Lesney this is number 62 and by the looks of it it's probably 1960s van but we'll have to do a bit more research on that now it should have a, a little door that slides up and down and i can just about see it it's not missing it has in fact been pushed all the way up into the top of the vehicle so to get that out i'm gonna have to drill out the uh rivet in the post there and uh, pop that one out unfortunately but uh, these uh, decals will be available online and it's uh, an interesting colour it's more like, like a, a creamy yellowy white colour and a silver grill so yep that will be a, an interesting project for the future so that will be another one to do at some point now the next car I, I don't know why I picked it up actually because it's going to be one hell of a makeover look at the state of that so at some point I think judging by the internal colour it was probably green it's a Mercedes 500 SE series number I think that says 46 again it's a Lesney car so probably a later one 1960s and somebody has obviously decided they wanted it red didn't like the green they wanted it red so they've painted it red obviously there's the original green and the boot now not only if they painted the whole car red they've actually done the windscreen front and rear side yeah all red so that's going to be a, <clears throat> a challenge it's in itself just to uh, remove all the paint now a fellow modeler tends to use dot 4 brake fluid to remove paint from these plastic inserts so uh, I'm going to have to try and get a hold of some of that because I don't have any if not I might just gently use some sort of spirit white spirit or something see if it comes off with that but yeah no that's going to be a challenge and I have a very similar green to that in a in a spray can so it might even be Going back to its original colour. I don't often do uh, cars back to their original colour unless it's a, a simple colour for the simple reason you can't often match them with the uh, new rattle cans. <coughs> so that's those two. Now the next model, if you're a fan you'll love it, if you're not I don't care. But I've been looking for one of these to restore for quite a while. Now then, I know my brother will be excited. How did this bag? comes 1960s classic Ta-da! the Starship Enterprise NCC 1701 now this is again is a dinky USS Enterprise dinky toys uh, made in 1976 so we can actually tell when it was made so it's just got a little bit of play damage it looks like the uh, front deflected dish is a little bit scuffed but that'll soon polish up it's faded um, there's some damage there, it's been flexed at some point and the plastic's gone a, a funny lighter colour. Uh, obviously there's fade damage on the nacelles, on stickers as well, that's all scraped. Side one's not too bad. <coughs> Where it used to be kept, obviously there were a, possibly a heavy smoker because this is just a horrible nicotine yellow. 
I don't think that's just dirt alone. I think that has actually been stained by a smoker's environment. Uh, originally it would fire these little discs out of the front. Just there. So you pop your disc in a little insert there. Turn this clockwise. And then they would launch out there. So easily that can be undone with a Phillips screwdriver there. And uh, again at the base there. The original Starship Enterprise, that would be the uh, way the shuttle came out of. These doors would part, one either side. And the shuttle Galileo would be launched via there. But for Dinky, what they decided to do, then the original model would have had a toy shuttle located there. It's missing, so I'm going to have to try and find a replacement. Um, there's some companies out there that will... Um, what do they call it? Um, well, they make the toys themselves. They, re they recast items. They remould things. I think of the word at the moment. It's just escaped me at the moment. Um, so I think that I seem to remember they were orange or yellowy colour as well. So we'll have to find a replacement for that. And uh, not sure what why what's going on here. I mean, the nacelles seem in pretty good condition apart from they've separated a little bit. A little bit of a gap there, so we'll have to investigate as to how I can get those apart. I'm not entirely sure how I can do that. There's no obvious screws or anything that will uh, release them. So I'm not entirely sure how I can do that. Because I really want to be able to get to these nacelles and if I spray them, we'll try and buff them up with some sort of compound. Other details on this, I mean, there's little... Areas there where I think originally this starship would have had uh, some sort of window or something. I think the original one, I'm not sure if the phases actually came from these two areas here or they were on top. I can't quite remember offhand. My brother would be disappointed. But other than that, it's, uh, it's a lovely model to find. And uh, for the whole package for those two, and this was £6. And I'm more than happy to pay six pounds for such a, a wonderful item to restore. Obviously it will be restored back to its uh, original colour. I'm going to have to look online to see the best way to get something this discoloured back to white again. Failing that, I'm going to have to spray it, which I don't really want to do because I might lose some of this detailing on the saucer section. But once I take it apart, what we could actually do is Have a quick look now. That, oh, that screw comes out really well. Now, some sort of pressure spring there. This is where everything goes ping. Oh no, okay, that's a very simple mechanism. Um, even inside of the uh, saucer section, it seems to be a yellowy colour. So I can't. I don't ever remember them being that yellow, as far as I was concerned. They were they were all white. But there you go. Obviously, the way this works, if I can just show you, is as you fed the disc in and you wound it around clockwise, it was pushed via this little mechanism. The discs were in these little slots all the way around here. They were then located against this spring and then fired out of there now the springs in relatively good condition it just needs a bit of a clean that just lifts off that can be buffed up quite easily that's just a cast alloy so that's going to be a, a really good project for me to do might even start that later on and again that just slots out so a basic, it is quite basic actually. Again, I'll clean that up. Some warm soapy water. Uh, what else have we got here? Oh, I've started taking it apart now, haven't I? So what I'm going to have to do is... With that with a smaller screwdriver actually. So that's that one. And uh, let's see. 
Oh, hello. Here it comes. All right, okay. So let's just pop the main fuselage or whatever you call it, the body of the plane there. That just comes out of there, I think. Or will it? Ah, there we go. Right, so that's the original colour of the plastic. A dark orange, and that's obviously faded over time to that colour. You've got Enterprise written on the inside. So if you're working in the factory, and if you're thinking, what does this part belong to? You've got it written on the bottom and on the inside. These are just plastic, again, says an Enterprise there. When the item was um, tooled, it's got a B there, so there was probably a, a simple instruction guide on to how to assemble this device, this, this toy. And I'm really, really going to have to possibly look on YouTube and work out how the hell I have a nasty feeling that these might have to be pulled out somehow. I just can't think. Hang on, that was nearly apart already. I wonder if we can just... Uh, unless those... No, that part of that moulding or what? That's part of that. So that needs to slot out. I have a feeling this slots together somehow. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to come apart. Might have to look on YouTube to see how it actually comes apart because I don't think, by the look of it, it's going to be flipping easy. I've got a feeling that if I just take this off camera a minute, I need it closer to me that these little orange lace studs. Oh, I see, they pop in. Ah, right, okay, yeah, I've worked to that. So, these originally splayed apart they've been pressed in over time that's what's made it loose so I might have to build that up with a bit of extra plastic and just resplay them and all they did was you slot this together and then you pop in the nacelle part the front of the nacelle and it held it together that's going to be loose that's for, again, there's the original colour of the plastic and look what it's faded to. So it'll be interesting to get that done. Enterprise again. So they've sprayed one side on the inside, not the other. Right, so let's not get those mixed up, let's put them together. So that's one side and the other side is not quite as loose so I think I'm just gonna have to there we go that came out really easily display the ends over and set those out and again this one's not coming apart quite so easily bit of a flipping fiddle this one obviously when they wanted it to go together originally they didn't want it coming apart again in the child's hands but it's amazing how one side comes apart really well and the other side gives you a little bit of grief like that there we go he's out so that's again just a molded piece of plastic Seems to be in the correct shape it should be. It's not twisted. Again, a good clean with some warm soapy water. And these will be paint stripped. No idea if I can get these decals online. Some reproduction. That's the word I was looking for earlier. A reproduction shuttle and reproduction decals for the uh, model. A bit of a senior moment then. 
can't remember what I'm trying to say. So that's that one and that's that one. So those would be relatively easy to do. No shortage of white paint. Now this is easy enough. This is just a spring by the looks of it. Yeah, there we go. Everything tumbles out. So the uh, shuttle bay doors, which are technically not supposed to be shuttle bay doors. USS Enterprise again. Written on the inside, so nicely identified to the person who has to put it back together. This is a little bit rusty, just corrosion due to age, I think. I don't think it would have been dunked in water at some point because the stickers would have come off. But yeah, that will just, uh, on my uh, rotary tool, while I brush that up, and that will come up lovely. And that in itself is just one single casting. Now that, I'm not going to be able to use caustic soda, that's going to be a paint stripper job. I, don't, I haven't got a container big enough for caustic soda for that. I'm pretty sure I haven't. So that is the uh, disassembly of the uh, USS Enterprise Dinky 1976. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward. So in a moment I should be going online to find various bits and bobs that I'm going to need to rebuild this. That shouldn't be a problem. I think that's supposed to face that way. So I just need to find a nice orange paint to respray that. Because I can't see that orange coming up all that well by cleaning it. So again, all warm soapy water. Wash all these up. And that's that. So, bit grubby. So for the time being, just to remind you, the radial rental truck, the Starship Enterprise, and this lovely Mercedes. <laughs> oh, I'm going to live to regret buying that, aren't I? To do. So if anybody online is thinking of doing one of these, I've made a start. I've shown you how it comes apart. It is relatively easy to take apart. Uh, so my next video will probably be, once I've stripped all the paint, you really don't want a video of me stripping the paint down because it's quite boring, and I've shown it in other models before. So once I've got all the items that I need together, and they're all cleaned and sprayed, the next video will probably be the assembly video. If not, I might even show you the restoration or clean up process of the plastic items. See, this is just going to have to come off. I'm just hoping that there's going to be out there somewhere someone who reproduces these stickers. That's just going to disintegrate. I can't peel that off. I'm going to have to try and heat it up gently and peel it off, but it's... 40 years old, 40 odd years old, and it's just not going to come off in one piece. Not that I want it to anyway, because it's absolutely covered in crap. I mean, my fingers are black just touching it, so Christ knows where it's been. So wash hands, and then that's that. So there you go. Uh, all done. So I still haven't got around to doing those. I sometimes wonder why I start something without finishing another item. Um, at, the, at the moment, I'm doing one of these over here. It's being sprayed up. As you can see, decided not to video it because I thought that's the last army truck. You might be a bit fed up with seeing me do that type of vehicle. I thought this would be a bit different. Me showing you what I've bought today. So whoever you are, friends, family, complete strangers, if you watch my videos, that's how you disassemble Starship Enterprise Dinky Toy. Quite easy, really. So until next time, I uh, bid you farewell and catch you later. Bye-zee-bye.